morning, San Antonio starts right now. A crash earlier this morning ends with one woman in the hospital and the driver now in custody. We'll explain what happened. Local groups across San Antonio are ready to kick off the holiday season by giving back to those in need. But a lot of volunteers are needed to do that. Just ahead on JMSA, we're on the city's far west side with more on how you can help today. Taking a look outside with live cam 66 degrees at 8 a.m. Sarah Spivey says we can expect a cool front later today. She'll explain in just a bit. Good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, November 21st. Thank you so much for joining us. We are all smiles, good vibes today. That is because UTSA won. Rocking UTSA colors. Yeah, birds up. Congratulations, 11-0. Yes, 11-0. And that last play, three seconds left. San Antonio to San Antonio Connection. We're going to have the highlights. But first, checking in with Sarah Spivey. Sarah, is the fog going to clear? Yeah, and, and I got to do it. I got to do it. Meet, meet. Meet, meet. There we go. <laughs> You know, really awesome to see UTSA come away with that game last night. All right, let's go ahead and take a look outside. We do have clouds out there this morning, and even on the horizon, you can see that it's a bit hazy. There are some areas of patchy fog. It's especially dense, though, south and east of San Antonio. You can see that visibility is down to a mile in Gonzales, down to practically zero in Beeville and in Victoria, down to five-mile visibility in Pleasanton early this morning. And it's fairly warm to start the day. Temperatures are in the 60s. Dew point are very high as well. It is muggy out there, but as Sarah just mentioned, we are going to see a front this afternoon. That's going to take out the humidity and give us a really nice start to Thanksgiving week this upcoming week. For now, though, today it's going to be fairly cloudy and temperatures are going to be climbing into the mid 70s before that front arrives. Now we will see a few peaks of sunshine here and there, but all in all a fairly gray day. And once that front moves through this evening, our winds will be gusting from the north up to 30 to 35 miles per hour. As I just mentioned, that sets up a great Monday and Tuesday for us. But on Thanksgiving Day, we are expecting some rain. So we've got a lot to chat about in the forecast in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a crash early this morning ends with one person in the hospital. The driver involved may now be facing charges. This is what we know right now. Police tell us around 3.30 this morning, two vehicles headed westbound on the frontage road to 410 between Parambital and Starcrest, a black vehicle trying to make a right hand turn suddenly changed, decided to go straight. That is when the light colored vehicle behind it crashed into it. Now, the people inside that black car not injured. The driver of the other vehicle taken into custody for possible DWI. His passenger taken to Bamsey at last check life threatening injuries. The family of a woman killed during a single car crash on the city's west side is remembering her. Brenda Lee Ibada died Friday morning after crashing her car on Highway 90 near Callahan Road. San Antonio police say she lost control of the truck and crashed into a trans guide sign. Ibada's mother and namesake says she thinks her daughter fell asleep at the wheel. If you feel tired, take a nap in your car or call somebody to take you home or somebody to drive you home. Ibada's family lit candles and wrote on balloons they released to honor her life. They say her arrangements will be made tomorrow, and Ibada's wish was to be cremated. New government research shows that Americans died of drug overdoses in record numbers across the country. In the 12-month period that ended in April, more than 100,000 Americans died of overdoses. That's up almost 30 percent from the year before. And we know drugs are a big problem in and around our community. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. Good morning, Sheriff. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. Just this week, your department made a meth bus around $320,000 worth of drugs found. And it just started as a routine traffic stop. What does the drug problem look like in and around our community? Well, I mean, look, I think ours is our problem here in San Antonio is just as bad, if, if not worse, than the rest of the country. Why? Because not only are we um, a, a destination, right? And drugs are ending up here, but we're also a major hub uh, for drugs coming into the country. They're stopping here, being redistributed outwards. But then also just by the fact that we're on so many major interstates, drugs are coming right through our uh, county on a daily basis. So, Sheriff, we have discussed gang violence and the cartels with you before. So is there still a heavy presence of that problem in our area? Uh, there is, there is. We're seeing our, our you know, more than our share of, of cartel activity, uh, but also just organized crime locally. Um, you know, we have an organized crime group that was formed up, uh, reformed and, and formed up 
earlier this year with with regard to that we're stationed over at the tag uh, the texas anti-gang center uh it's kind of a task force type setting but we have a, an entire uh group within the the sheriff's office uniform gang unit and uh, uh plainclothes assets that are also working basically 24 7 to try to fight the problem and speaking of gang violence we also know gun violence violent crimes historically bad the last couple of years are you guys still seeing that trend and if so why do you think that is you know, I, I don't I don't know, Max. I'm not sure why we're, why we're seeing it. You know, here recently we saw a, a, a rash of carjackings and attempted carjackings. As we know, we had the one that SAPD hired, uh, handled in the quarry where that young lady was shot in the face. Uh, around that same time, we had another young man that was successfully carjacked of his car out on, out on the west side of the county. Uh, we were able to make an arrest in that, but we we've seen. Uh, oh, and, and then shortly thereafter, on a Sunday morning at a, at a Walmart off Foster Road, we saw an attempted carjacking by a 14-year-old. It just seems that violent crime is on the rise. I mean, we're on top of it. We're working with our partners, federal, state, and local. Obviously, the SAPD is gearing a lot of their efforts toward it as well. But, but yes, gun violence is on the rise. Speaking of gun violence, the last time you joined a sheriff, you talked about the constitutional carry law. Have you noticed any changes since that law has gone into effect? You know, we uh, legal guns have never been the issue, right? Legal guns are not a problem until the moment they're stolen, for example, or or, or fall into the wrong hands. Uh, you know, free, uh, fortunately, after that initial, we saw, a, again, a rash of stolen guns being used against our, our deputies. We did some awareness. We, we did you all show and we, we were able to get people, the word out to people that keep an eye on your guns 24-7. Thankfully, and I'm knocking on wood, we haven't seen stolen guns become as much of an issue now. That is good to hear. Now, we are just about five days or so away from Thanksgiving. We know last year was unique. Not that many people out and about, not many people driving and whatnot. Sarah brought it up earlier this morning. You know, a lot of people are going to be out seeing family. A lot of people are going to be drinking for the holiday season. Do you guys expect a rise in possible drunk drivers? And what is your message to the public for the holidays come about? Well, you know, unfortunately, drunk driving is, is a problem in, in Bear County 365 days a year. Uh, but but by virtue of that, if there's more traffic on the road, then there's going to be more drunk drivers on the road. So people just need to be out there on the lookout for that. There's no reason to drink and drive, uh, you know, Uber it, stay where you are, take a bus, get designated driver. And a designated driver means somebody that hasn't been drinking at all, not the most sober person in the car you know we, that's not that's not a designated driver so there's no reason for it uh definitely be on the lookout for for drunk drivers on the road but also as we're out and about doing our, our black friday shopping uh be extra cognizant of your personal space uh in, in the parking lot so we want to make sure that we're not lingering too long in your car uh get in get out and do whatever you need to do well, that's good advice there. Thank you so much, Sheriff, for making time for us all the time. So thank you so much. And for our viewers, you can watch this full interview later on KSAT.com this morning. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, guys. Be safe. Well, as the holiday seasons approach, a local group stepping up, helping out, helping those struggling with homelessness. They're providing a warm and festive meal all week. The group Humble to Serve Ministries, they've been preparing turkeys and so much more distributing hundreds of Thanksgiving plates just this afternoon. Well, the group is meeting on the city's far west side at Marbach Christian Church. Alicia Barrera is live at the church with what's needed ahead of the event. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, Hubble to Serve Ministries is planning to serve over 400 people, I believe closer to 500. And this church has been nice enough to open up the, the doors of their kitchen. And you see behind me some of the group that has really made this happen. Regina Flores, she's been spearheading this, so to speak. So how did this idea to feed over 400 people even come about? And we already see the, the, the materials in the background over here that y'all have ready for today. Yes, actually, uh, what happened is that we used to be homeless ourselves, me and my husband, and uh, our ministry gives back to the community and um, on a daily basis we actually minister to a lot of homeless people and so we see that there's a pandemic going on with a lot of homelessness in the community everywhere we go so we know Thanksgiving is an important holiday and we want to give them hope you know so we want to go ahead and do that for them today so she was mentioning off camera that this started with a smaller a number 250 plates it's jumped up again close to 500 What's the need for volunteers today? They can start showing up around 1.30 here off Marbach. We want as many volunteers as we can get, please. Um, we need uh, food to be distributed all over uh, San Antonio. We just don't want to hit one spot like downtown. We want to hit 
the west side, south side, east side, north side. We see it everywhere. Driving over here, I saw so many people that are homeless, that might be hungry, might be cold. We need blankets if you want to bring blankets, gloves, socks. Um, at least 50 plus would be good. I mean, just that would be great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So again, you have the address on your screen right there where you can meet starting at 1.30 and really they'll be need, needing those volunteers until that last plate is handed over. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you so much, Alicia. Time now, 810, 67 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA, the latest on an armed robbery that turned into a shooting at an El Paso airport. What we've learned so far. And we've talked about it throughout the morning. UTSA capitalizing on their perfect season. How it ended, why they're celebrating after the break. 67 degrees right now at 810. Some of that fog still lingering around. Sarah Spivey says we can expect humidity to drop as a cool front will come in later today. She'll explain that in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back and go UTSA. They have done it, clinching their first division title and they did so with a last second win over UAB 34-31, a wild end to an amazing game. Roan Orders played from behind just about the whole game at half. They were down 24-17 third quarter. Quarterback Frank Harris finds Zakari Franklin, record breaker, 56 yard touchdown pass and run to tie it up. 24 all Roadrunners actually take the lead 27 24 in the fourth quarter on a 49 yard field goal. But once again, the Roadrunners found themselves down 31 27 with just over five minutes to play. Oh, you can see the crowd going crazy. We've been telling people throughout the week, fill the dome. And here we go. Final play of the day. This is where it is. Low snap drop hits the ground. Frank Harris picks it, tipped, and then boom, a one-yard touchdown. Oscar Cardenas, three seconds left. That is the game winner. UTSA defeats UAB 34-30 win, winning the Conference USA West Division title, staying undefeated 11-0. But here's something that, that's never, ever wrong with my team. It's their effort. They, they never go away. And we'd say it all the time, a champion has the ability to play one play longer than his opponent, and we played one play longer than they did tonight. That was it. I saw the play claw, and uh, I knew I had a chance to, to give this team a win, and we were executed not to where we won it, but it happened. The snap was low, so uh, that kind of threw the play off from Jump Street, um, and then I was rolling out to just try to figure out something, and uh, Oscar was still open, so I just you know threw it. Uh, he, t he got tipped, and he concentrated well, and I caught it. and. Uh, you know, let's play the game. Resilience, perseverance, determination. One play better than the other. UTSA now hosting the Conference USA Championship at the Alamo Dome December 3rd. But first, wrapping up the regular season in Denton next Saturday, taking on UNT North Texas. Game's at 1 p.m. Birds up. Also, Cowboys do play today. Cowboys play today, 2.30, taking on... There you go. Sarah Spivey's Sarah Spivey. favorite team. There we go. You, okay. okay, I don't want people to know <laughs> that I'm a Chiefs fan. Okay, she's today. a Cowboys fan. She's okay. a Cowboys fan. See, I'm we, sorry. We love I Pat Mahomes myself. here too, so you could you could root for. But you know what? It's all fair right. if we all love UTSA. Everybody so knows if you've been watching this show long enough, you know I'm a Chiefs yeah. fan. So yeah. may the best team win. Let's do that. All right, <laughs> take a look outside. Uh, we do have some areas of fog out there this morning, especially south and east of San Antonio. Visibility down to a mile in Gonzales. Even in Del Rio, visibility down to four miles, down to five miles in Yavaldi. And the reason for that is the temperatures and the dew points are right near each other. It is very warm for the start of the day here as, it, as far as the middle of November goes. It's 67 degrees. We usually see a high temperature right near 70 this time of year. So again, a very warm start to the day. 65 in Kerrville, 67 in Del Rio, 68 in Catula. And when you compare this to how we started off the day yesterday, yes, we had fog yesterday morning, but it was 15 to 20 degrees cooler to start the day yesterday. Uh, but again, a very uh, warm and humid air mass out there for us. But things are going to change today, all because of a cool front moving through. You can see all the rain is associated with the same system out toward the east, but we're not going to see much rain today, if any at all. That front is to our north, currently pushing through Abilene and Midland. Temperatures are much cooler, uh, more than 20 degrees cooler up in Amarillo, where it's 43. And then this is the real kicker, much drier out there behind that front as well. So although it's very humid outside, 
that cool front is going to dry us out and make it very pleasant Monday and Tuesday of this upcoming week. Today, though, we are going to stay fairly cloudy, really only a few peaks of sunshine. That front will move through right at around 2 p.m., 4 p.m. Uh, time frame, and with it will come an opportunity for an isolated shower, but we're not going to be seeing widespread rain today by any means. The better rain chances do sit south of Highway 90 toward Catula, Beville, Victoria, and then again, that front will be well to the south by midnight. Here's the thing. It's going to get very windy behind that front. Winds are going to gust up to about 30 to 35 miles per hour late tonight. Uh, so again, any kind of light Christmas decorations, make sure they're tied down because uh, those winds will be very, very windy tonight into early Monday morning as well. Uh, so for today's forecast, we're calling for clouds for most of the day. We'll be at 73 at noon and then in the afternoon, there could be a few peaks of sunshine here and there. 76 for the high as that front moves through uh, and a small chance 20% for an isolated shower and then tonight temperatures will fall into the 50s and it will become windy gusts of up to about 30 miles per hour uh, so it's going to be nice and dry tomorrow and Tuesday with dew points in the 30s uh, so that means chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons and then by Wednesday humidity will be back we'll see some morning fog and on Thanksgiving Day we are expecting a front so before that front arrives Wednesday will be warmer in the 70s and then that front will move through Thanksgiving Day. Most of the scattered showers and storms will be during the first part of the day. And then by Friday afternoon, we're going to struggle to get out of the 50s on Friday afternoon. So it's going to be much cooler on Friday as you're doing some of your Christmas shopping if you're brave enough to go out <laughs> for Black Friday itself. So again, a, a bit of a double dose of cold fronts here for us. Chilly mornings tomorrow and Tuesday with comfortable afternoons. And then Thursday, hopefully we can get a little rain in the rain gauge. I know it doesn't come at a time that we necessarily want the rain Thanksgiving Day, but but it's in the forecast for us. We definitely do need the rain. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 820, 67 degrees out. Well, coming up next, something we're all excited about here. Reese's released its largest peanut butter cup yet, but you might not uh. be able to get your hands on it. Sorry, Max. Details coming up after the break. Sorry, Max. And oh. anyone else who's a huge Rhesus fan? Basically 80% of the country. I would say 95. Oh. Hershey announced that its limited edition 9-inch, yes, 9-inch Rhesus Thanksgiving pie sold out within oh. hours of its release. It is the largest peanut butter cup ever made, weighing in at 3.4 pounds. That's just impressive. I like how they call it a pie. The company sold 3,000 pies for about $45 each. Hershey, like other candy companies, relies on impulse purchases to drive sales. They posted on Facebook, quote, looks like Reese's fans were really thankful for our new Reese's pie this year. It has now sold out. Okay, that one slice of pie, though, mm -hmm. how many actual, like, calories? Cups. Like, <laughs> like the actual, like, normal size Reese's peanut butter cups? Yeah. How many cups are in that one mm. slice? I think we're going to need a pie from Hershey. We do. Figure it out. Uh, this is our plea? Yes, this is our plea. Please send it. Thank you. Okay. We're thankful. <laughs> For you. 825, 67 degrees out. Well, there's still much more coming up on GMSA, including frightening moments at one of the nation's busiest airports. A man's gun goes off, scaring travelers, and now authorities are searching for that man. Plus, later in sports highlights from Brandon's huge win. Oh, next round of the playoffs. Oh, there we go. Got to keep it talking long enough to get the touchdown in there. We're going to take a look at some birthdays. This is Ariana, eight years old. Happy birthday. All right, and here we go. Thencha celebrating her birthday today. Happy birthday. Remember to keep posting your birthday pictures. KSAT.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, November 21st. We just had a story about the racist peanut butter Pie. uh, pies yeah. that are sold out, and I am so hungry. I can't stop thinking about them. But Sarah Spivey, she is one of my favorite co-anchors mm. because she made all of us. What did you make us, Sarah? Oh, yeah, it's in the oven in the break room. <laughs> <laughs> Bourbon sweet potato casserole. Bourbon. With candied pecans and bacon on top. 
so. Thank you, Sarah. I'm kind of experimenting with the GMSA crew because I have to, <laughs> I made this for a bigger Thanksgiving meal tonight, so. Let's see, they've got to give me their honest opinion. We'll be honest. All right, I know you will, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the pollen count today. No problems here. This is uh, just freshly in, and you can see that molds are low. They're the only allergen present today. And, you know, that's impressive because it has been mighty humid outside, and usually when we see higher humidity, we see the mold numbers go up quite a bit, but that's not the case today. Outside right now, cloudy skies, and there are some areas of fog out there this morning. Visibility is down to half a mile in Gonzales, down to seven in Pleasanton, down to five in Uvalde, and down to four in Del Rio. Coming up, we'll take a look closer to the metro area, and you can see some areas of fog there as well. It's going to be a fairly cloudy day, a few peaks of sunshine here and there for us, but generally more clouds than sun. And we are going to see a cool front move through today between about 2 4 p.m. Temperatures will top off in the mid to upper 70s. That front will move through. It'll switch our winds around to the north, gusts up to about 30 miles per hour and bring us a lot drier air and nicer weather as we start Thanksgiving week. We do have the chance for rain though Thanksgiving day, so a lot to unpack in the forecast coming up in a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. And your top stories Pleasanton ISD mourning the death of their superintendent. Dr. Matthew Mann passed away from a heart attack. Now, the district made the announcement on their Facebook page just yesterday. He suffered a heart attack earlier in the week. He never fully recovered. In a statement, the district spokesperson said, quote, Dr. Mann was a dynamic leader who made deep connections with people of Pleasanton ISD and the community, and he will be greatly missed by all of us. End quote. Dr. Mann had been with the district since 2012. In your morning headlines, some scary moments at an airport in Atlanta. Authorities say a passenger awaiting a bag search at the Atlanta airport's main security checkpoint reached in the bag and grabbed a firearm and it went off, causing chaos among travelers. The Transportation Security Administration says it happened Saturday afternoon at Hartsfield Jackson Airport, but it was not an active shooter incident. Officials say the passenger ran away and exited the airport. Officers are now looking for the suspect to arrest him. They identified him as 42 year old as a 42 year old convicted felon. The FAA ordered a temporary ground stop on flights. Normal operations resumed less than two hours later. And speaking of airports, as millions of Americans prepare to travel over Thanksgiving holidays, many are also lining up for COVID booster shots now that the CDC has authorized those boosters for everyone 18 and older. ABC's Elwin Lopez has more on the new rollout. This morning, that extra COVID-19 shot in high demand as Americans gear up for the holidays. I'm really happy about it because the holidays are coming up and I'd, I'd like to feel a little safer being around people. The CDC clearing the way for anyone 18 and older to roll up their sleeves for an added dose six months after their last one. We are seeing more breakthrough infections. That is expected to increase uh, in the coming months because of the winter weather. This comes as 34 states are now seeing a surge in new infections. The U.S. averaging more than 94,000 cases a day. That's 20,000 more than a week ago. In New Mexico, healthcare workers are at their breaking point. Our situation right now is dire. Most of these patients are unvaccinated. This is overwhelming our healthcare system. And in Connecticut, the gravity of battling COVID-19 still very real for Glenn Merritt III. I wasn't able to talk. My body wouldn't move. Merritt was in a coma for four months after getting infected with the virus back in March. I wanted to get the vaccine, but here in Connecticut, they were doing it by age groups, and my age group wasn't available. It wasn't until last month that the 26-year-old was released from Gaylord Specialty Hospital, relearning how to walk, and now on oxygen seven months after he was infected. Dialysis, rehab, constant pain. It's, it's not a way anybody would want to live. So get the vaccine and just stay safe. That was Elwin Lopez reporting. Well, this morning, police in El Paso still not made any arrests following that deadly shooting near the city's airport. It happened late Friday night in a long term parking lot. So far, El Paso police are calling it an aggravated robbery, saying the victim was a 49 year old man. Sources say the victim was a Southwest Airlines employee who was changing a tire in an employee parking lot. 
That's when he was shot and killed. A police spokesperson says as of now, the preliminary investigation indicates this was not a random situation and there is not a threat to the airport. Southwest Airlines later commented saying, quote, this is a heartbreaking, tragic loss for the Southwest team, end quote. A new report from a group that oversees the reliability of the nation's electrical sector says Texas is still at risk of blackouts for this coming winter season. The North American Electric Reliability Cooperation said this week Texas could have a nearly 40 percent shortfall in available power while trying to meet demand in the event of another severe winter storm. The warnings come after Governor Greg Abbott and the new leadership of the state's electric grid just stated that they're confident the lights will stay on this time. The good news, forecasters say it's very unlikely to see another similar extreme weather event in Texas this year. Well, local groups across the city are ready to kick off the holiday season, and they're doing it by focusing on those who need it most. This morning, Humble to Serve Ministries is meeting on the city's far west side to feed over 400 people. That's right. So they have the food, they have the materials they need. However, they do need more volunteers. Alicia Barrera joins us live outside of Marbach Christian Church with more on today's event. Alicia. Good morning. Well, the distribution itself kicks off at three, but again, Max, Sarah, you mentioned it. The big need is volunteers. Volunteers are asked to show up here around 1.30. And I want to kind of highlight the group here. Joe in the blue here has been helping with the cooking. And then the team in the background you see is over in ministry. And then Regina Navarro, she's been helping also with the preparing. So in her trunk, you see here uh, just the materials that they'll be using. You started off with 15 turkeys, and then that grew to so many that you're able to y'all are going to be able to serve more than 500. The big need for volunteers. Yes, there is a big need for volunteers. We need uh, volunteers to come and help with serving the plates. Um, we need volunteers to come and help and distribute out the plates all over San Antonio. We just want to focus in one area. There's so much need all over the city. Uh, we want to go to west side, uh, east side, south side, north side. Um, you know, downtown, under bridges. Um, but, you know, we want you to take some caution with that as well. Wear your mask, wear your gloves if you need. We'll, we'll have some of that provided here. Um, we want you all to just experience what we experience on a daily doing ministry work. So I want to ask you, uh, with, with handing over a plate, you say it's not just that action. You and your husband were actually homeless, experiencing homeless just four years ago to the date. Their anniversary was November 13th. So congratulations for getting this far <laughs> and doing so much for the community. But also, what do you hope to inspire today to those that you're able to reach? We want to let them know that they're not alone out there. We want to let them know that with love and with uh, the word of God, um, with salvation, us giving them, you know, a chance, you know, them giving us a chance that we can bring them, you know, some hope and not only a meal, but, you know, some kind of help out there because we do have a lot of resources. We we do um, associate with a lot of organizations that can get them off the street, provide a, a home and everything else. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So again, there you have it. Some of the crew behind Humble to Serve Ministries. They need your help, so I hope you can make it out here. Marbach Christian Church. Just put it on your Google Maps and it'll lead you here. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, the University of Incarnate Word, it's all lit up. Yesterday was a 35th annual Light the Way Holiday Festival. Steve Spreester was the event's MC and his Nightbeat co-anchor, Stefania Jimenez, was there to join him. This year, the event was back in person. Last year, they did a drive through event because of the pandemic. But organizers were happy to welcome everyone back this year to experience the holiday event in person. We're just so happy to welcome people to the University of Incarnate Word. We'd love them to get to know our community, to be on the campus, to know where we are in San Antonio, a little bit more about what we do. So it's a really great opportunity for us to connect with everyone in the community. And if you weren't able to make it out last night, you can still enjoy the holiday lights at UIW's campus through the new year. Time now, 839, 67 degrees out. Go Brandeis! That's right, Brandeis volleyball team did it. They are state champs. We have highlights from the huge win still to come. And another local college team doing big things on the field. Incarnate Word also clinches their conference title. Details still ahead. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City 67 now. What is the rest of the weekend? What does Thanksgiving week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey.
Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. 67 degrees this morning. We've been spoiled with the weather recently. We really have, but I don't really like the humidity or the fog in the morning. It really <laughs> messes with my hair, Sarah, but you said that should be clearing up soon later today. Yeah, I mean this afternoon we're going to have a cool front move through. That's going to sweep the humidity away, uh, but it is going to make it windy. So hair, bad hair days can just put a hat on or <laughs> just anchor down, <laughs> anchor down. That's a good, good advice there. Like a look outside. It is cloudy. You know, yesterday we spent most of the day under clouds here in San Antonio and today's going to be fairly similar. We will see peaks of sunshine here and there, but it's generally going to be a fairly cloudy day. 67 degrees outside winds from the south southwest at about uh, five miles per hour and closer to San Antonio. You can see that there are some areas of fog. It's just not quite as dense as it was yesterday morning. Visibility down to six miles at Stinson, down to five in Castroville and down to five in Hondo. A wider view here, a visibility practically zero in Gonzales. So dense fog out in Gonzales and in Hallettsville. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Victoria, down to zero in Beeville as well. Visibility lower in Del Rio from some haze on the horizon there too. It is a warm start to our day. Temperatures are in the mid 60s uh, and even in the upper 60s in many places like in Pleasanton where it's 69 degrees, 68 in New Braunfels, 67 in Del Rio and 64 in Rock Springs. A wider view you can see where the front is. Look up toward Amarillo and Lubbock. Temperatures in the 40s there in the 50s in Midland and Abilene as that front is just starting to push through there. We can expect this front to move through San Antonio this afternoon. Uh, so we're still going to have a warm day and again day with a lot of clouds out there. Uh, well, when that front moves through 2 p.m. 4 p.m. a chance for an isolated shower, but it doesn't look like we're going to have a good chance for healthy rain with this front by any means. Better rain chances slightly south of Highway 90, but again not expecting any uh, uh, heavy rain with this system moving through at all uh, by any means. It's just going to get windy behind that front tonight. Winds could gust up to about 30 to 35 miles per hour. This is a look at midnight, so expect some wind. And if you have any light patio furniture or any Christmas decorations, they may need to be anchored down a little bit more because of those gusty winds from the north up to about 35 miles per hour. So again, today's forecast calls for a fairly gray day with a few peaks of sunshine here and there. 20% chance for an isolated shower from 2 p.m. through about 8 p.m. That front will move through and then it'll become windy. Temperatures will fall into the 50 by midnight and by the start of the day tomorrow morning, it's going to be chilly. Dew points will only be in the 30s Monday and Tuesday, so that's very dry. So that means cold mornings in the 40s and 50s and comfortable afternoons near 70 degrees tomorrow and Tuesday. Then we'll see the humidity return briefly Wednesday and for the start of Thanksgiving and on Thanksgiving Day, we're going to get a front moving through and that front is going to come with a chance for rain. Now I know it comes on Thanksgiving and uh, ideally we wouldn't have any rain on Thanksgiving, but that's just where the forecast falls this week. A scattered showers and a few thunder showers as well. There 40% chance Thursday, mainly during the first part of the day, 68 for the high and then behind that front, it's going to be breezy and cool on Friday, Black Friday. Temperatures will struggle to get out of the 50s for most of the day, so it is going to be uh, feeling a lot more like fall and early winter on Friday itself. So double dose of cold fronts this week. The first one moving through today makes things feel more pleasant. The second one on Thanksgiving brings a chance for rain and knocks those temperatures down significantly. Max, what's going up with sports? All right, so we've been talking about UTSA throughout the morning. Huge win yesterday, but there was a lot of football action going on yesterday. UIW claiming the Southland Conference title with a huge win over Houston Baptist. Take a look. The Cardinals got off to a great start. 35 points in the first quarter alone. That included a pick six by Moses Reynolds. Stepped in front of the pass, took it 25 yards. The John Jay grab puts UIW up 14-0. Four minutes into the game, a few plays later, the Cardinals offense go to work. Quarterback Cameron Ward slinging it. C.J. Hardy, 25-yard score. 21-0, the Cardinals would go on to win the game. Huge 55-14 on the road, wrapping up the regular season. They are now waiting for the selection show later this morning for the playoffs. All right, Trinity Tigers season, it is over. Falling short to the undefeated Mary Harden-Baylor. First round of the Division Three National Tournament. 
Tigers down at 6-3 in the fourth quarter, trying to get a stop on fourth and one. A little over two minutes left in regulation, but the Crusaders call game. That was a 17-yard touchdown run. The final, 13-3, but still a great season for the Tigers. Taking a look from other of our favorite schools. Here we go. Texas A&M putting on a show yesterday, winning huge 52-3. And then Texas losing six in a row, the latest in Morgantown, losing it to West Virginia. Here we go from college to high school. Second round of the high school football playoffs wrapping up last night. Number one, bring it. Brennan. Ooh, there we go. Class 6A Division 1. The Bears strike first, third and six at the 10. Quarterback Ashton DeBose keeping it himself. Breaks a tackle in the backfield. That's an end zone. First points of the game next. Brennan possession. More offense. DeBose escaping the pocket. Wait for it. Look at a little slow mo here. And finds a wide open. Oh my goodness, he is too open. Chase Campbell in the end zone. 23 yard score, 14 0 lead. Brandon would roll past Los Fresnos, 63 10. They are into the next round. All right, in at Class 6A Division 2 matchup, number nine, Taft. The Raiders trail 17 0 in the third quarter, fourth and 12. Quarterback Justin Hurt. Finding Julio Sanchez makes two defenders miss along the sidelines, cutting up field, 20-yard score. Huge play, making it 17-7, but would not be enough for Taft to get the win. Falling short, 27-24. Lanier also playing yesterday. They, too, would go home without the W, 42-20, falling to McAllen Memorial. Huge congrats to the Brandeis volleyball team winning the UIL Class 6A state title yesterday in Garland, a first in the program's history. Broncos down two sets to one against Keller, rallied to force a fifth set on match point. Kaylee Ferris, Layla Smalls shot off the block and out. That is the clincher. Brandeis wins the state title three sets to two. So surreal, you know, we've worked, this is something I've worked for, you know, ever since I stepped foot in the brand nice doors and all the hard work, all the pain, all the tears, all the, everything's been worth it. Not too many people get to this moment, especially with a team of, what, 10 or more seniors. So, you know, just to be with all my best friends and win the state title, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing. Another congrats to a local school, John Paul II Catholic High School in shirts. Their volleyball team winning the Class 4A state championship. So congrats to everyone. Oh, so exciting. You can just seal the jubilation in their Way faces. to represent our San Antonio area. Love it. Way All to right. go, girls. Time now, 851, 68 degrees out. We'll be right back. Thanksgiving is almost here, but you don't need to spend days in the kitchen. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, some easy hacks you need to know before your holiday gathering, a lot of which will save you some time. All right, we've been talking about a lot of, about butterflies lately, so researchers are asking the public to report any sightings of monarch butterflies. That's what a monarch looks like. It's on your screen right now in Texas and in seven other states. Scientists want to hear about sightings from December 1st to March 1st. You can submit your observations at journeynorth.org. Researchers say the information may help conservation efforts by determining if monarchs can spend the winter as non-breeding adults in the southern U.S. Monarch populations have declined significantly over the past two decades. We do have molds present in today's pollen count. They're low, though, 370. Uh, and looking at the forecast, mainly a gray day, a few peaks of sunshine here and there. That front will move through in the afternoon, bringing a small chance for rain, but really allowing for the humidity to get out of here. In fact, tomorrow morning, uh, it's going to be chilly with comfortable tomorrow in the afternoon with low humidity. Ditto weather on Tuesday, and then a front is going to move through Thanksgiving Day. And so that is going to bring us a chance for some showers and storms early on Thanksgiving, but making it feel a lot cooler by this next weekend. Here's the thing, though. If it's nice out, you throw the football. If not, you stay in, you watch the Cowboys. Yeah, and be grateful for the rain. <laughs> well, go Cowboys. Way to go. Um, Brandeis, Brandeis. John Pope II. And UTSA. And UTSA. <laughs>